Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Josh Perry, and for those that don't know who I am, I'm a former professional BMX athlete, multiple brain tumor survivor turned public speaker and keto coach. You can learn more about me and follow my journey here on this channel, as well as my Instagram page, at Josh Perry BMX. And today we're gonna to talk about stress and exercise, how they're you know, interconnected and how the both of them affect a ketogenic diet lifestyle and can help you or go against you and your goals. We often hear the word stress and automatically think the word in a negative context. Although the scenarios in which we typically refer to stress in today's society surely are ones of negative context that can cause harm to the brain and the body in chronically high levels, the truth is we need stress in our lives for many reasons. The challenge is managing the abundance of stress that most of us live with and don't even know it. Things like poor food choices, lack of exercise or even over-exercising, regularly consuming sugar, alcohol, or other toxins, lack of quality sleep, poor relationships, and so much more can cause stress in our body. Stress responses are ingrained in our DNA as a survival tactic to keep us safe from harm and truthfully keep us alive. But acute stressors allow our bodies to adapt and become stronger over time. The issue with stress in today's modern world is that we create the majority of the stress in our lives from poor lifestyle choices and a mental perspective that in most cases are not life-threatening fears but linger for the majority of our days and influence poor choices with regard to our health and makes us feel, think, and look less than our best. Cortisol has become more well known in today's world with its relationship to stress as we've become more aware of chronic stress and how it affects our health. This relationship tends to have us view cortisol as a negative hormone, but it's actually a very vital hormone that influences many important aspects of our existence, such as cognitive function, metabolism, inflammatory processes, immune function, and so much more. And cortisol is a hormone known as the stress hormone along with adrenaline that's secreted by the adrenal glands under environmental stimulation, also known as stress, whether it be physiological stress or perceived stress by the brain. The thing about the brain is, although incredibly smart, the brain reacts the same way to stress in terms of the release of cortisol, whether the trigger be perceived stress, also known as thoughts, or physiological stress from exercise, toxins, low blood sugar, or poor sleep patterns. This means our thoughts can literally affect our physiology, and it's why it's an important aspect of a ketogenic diet to understand on a basic level so we can manage stress the best we possibly can. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're going to focus on managing stress in the context of burning fat to fuel our brain and enhancing our cognitive performance. This video is a branch off of an original video we produced titled, Five Steps to Burn Fat and Fuel Your Brain. And it's my goal to break down each of those five steps in more depth with more context. If you missed that video, check the description of this video for the link or reach out and I'll be sure to share it with you. Now, this is not about shortcuts that don't create longevity and often result in all the progress rebounding and some. This is about creating awareness for how stress shows up in your life, how you can begin to manage that stress, and how to take all of this and turn it into a lifestyle that supports your efforts in becoming the best version of yourself for you and the rest of the world that you interact with. With that said, the second step to burn fat and fuel your brain is stress management, which is paired with exercise, as exercise is a type of acute stress we want in our lives, but without the right context, and understanding, it can lead to chronic elevated levels of cortisol and deter us from our goals. Now exercise is also a great way to support step one of burning fat and filling your brain, which is a metabolic reset. And if you watch the five steps to burn fat and fill your brain or the four ways to reset your metabolism videos, you'll remember those glycogen stores I mentioned and how important it is to lower the levels of glycogen stores in your body to allow your body to shift its metabolism to fat from the, the body and the diet. Now this step of stress management could actually be the first step for many of us on this journey to burn fat and fuel our brains as many of us are living highly stressed out lives in various forms. We're also led to believe that the more of any effort equals more in terms of a return on our efforts along with eating less and moving more is the key to becoming healthier. All of those conditioned beliefs and actions are causes of elevated levels of stress that create even more cycles of stress, especially when we don't take time to recover. In times of stress, the body goes into survival mode and it can't focus on repairing or growing for the fundamental purpose in which stress presents itself, survival. When we're in a highly stressed out state, which most of us are and not even aware of it, as the body has become conditioned to believe that it's now in its natural state, the body rushes blood to our heart and our extremities to prepare us to fight or run for safety. Today's society has us constantly stressed by man-made events that are not life or death situations, leaving us walking around with chronically elevated levels of cortisol. Now, this is a huge issue for four main reasons. 
The first main reason is cortisol messes with our sleep and lack of quality sleep triggers more stress and therefore more cortisol secretion, which becomes a vicious cycle. Now cortisol is a part of our sleep cycle, rising in the morning to help us wake up and lowering in the evening as melatonin increases to relax us in support of sleep. When we're chronically stressed mentally from blue light exposure into the evenings before bed or from chronic elevated blood sugar levels, this can lead to poor sleep as we feel wired going to bed and tired when we awake. The second point is chronic high levels of cortisol triggers our bodies to utilize more glucose than it actually needs as it rushes glucose into our bloodstream, preparing us to take immediate action. This is an issue because it does so by tapping into our muscle protein stores through a process known as gluconeogenesis to create more glucose when needed or demanded by the stress response. This is why chronic training patterns, poor eating habits, and eating less amounts of food than our body requires can actually go against you in a profound way. Now, the third point is chronic levels of cortisol drives blood sugar to rise, as I just mentioned, which drives increased insulin levels, which drives fat storage upregulation. Combine this with poor eating habits, and it's clear why, despite your efforts, you may be going against your efforts with gaining weight or not even seeing changes that are going in your favor. And the fourth point is cortisol can half your IQ in the first seven minutes of being released. This, as you can imagine, doesn't lead to great decision making in general and can cloud your judgment. This understanding makes it really clear why we don't make the best food choices when stressed or decisions in business, sports, personal relationships, and so on. Now, when this is a normal way of living day to day, it's really easy to see how high levels of chronic stress occur and damage our brains and our goals. Some causes or triggers for overproduction of cortisol can include sugar crashes from eating too many carbs and sugar while not being fat or keto adapted or just eating too many carbs and sugar in general, chronic high heart rate training patterns that you know eat less, do more implementation, hectic daily work schedules and personal responsibilities and lifestyle, alcohol and processed food consumption, and difficult personal or business relationships. They all affect our brain one way or another. And when we're stimulating the adrenal glands so much and not doing anything to support them, that's when burnout can happen. And burnout can lead to waking up exhausted no matter how much sleep you get uncontrolled blood sugar levels, mood and energy dysregulation, diminished workout performance, recovery and immune function, systemic inflammation, declined cognitive function and elevated risk of disease, dysregulated appetite and fat storage, and finally, an inability to handle stress and so much more. This can translate to you feel wired for weeks and months at a time to fried. You know, you go from wired to fried, which is not ideal for athletes, parents, busy working people, someone battling an illness, or really any living human in general that wants a high quality of life. And it's also a fundamental driver in accelerated aging in today's high-paced, stressed out, carbohydrate-driven society. The key to stress management is to focus on getting high quality sleep consisting of at least six hours a night, not chronically overtraining, and finding ways to get your mental health in check with techniques like meditation, journaling, hiking, reading, or really anything that you can do to manage uh, getting your mind off the things that are bringing upon stressors and allow you to relax and create new thoughts and emotions or have a new perspective on your life. Uh, fostering more gratitude is one of those things that can help in profound ways. And the cool thing is there's so much modern technology that we can use like Oura Rings to track sleep patterns and heart rate variability, which is a metric to track stress and recovery. Blue light blocking glasses to keep out that blue light from screens that trigger cortisol responses at night. And apps like Headspace for guided meditations. And those are all tools that I use and recommend on a regular basis and can be very helpful in combating stress in your life. Now the first step to resetting the metabolism to burn fat and fuel your brain is a great way to combat stress as chronic elevated levels of blood Sugar stresses the body with excessive free radical damage and inflammation. But each step must be applied in a favorable manner to reducing stress as much as you can so that way the body has a chance to adapt and become stronger, which it can, given the chance. And so my final point of stress management is to not get caught up in the process of how long it may or may not take. I find people, including myself, often tend to go keto right away, beginning trying to eat one meal a day, implementing fasted workouts or prolonged fasts in an attempt to speed up the process. And this is a huge stress shock to the body and it makes sense as to why you may not be seeing results or you're actually feeling, looking, and performing worse than before. The change of fuel sources to begin this journey is enough of a stress to those coming from a standard American diet like I did and it's why I recommend following the first step of resetting your metabolism for two to three weeks. In this way, the body can adapt before introducing another stressor it has to learn how to overcome and adapt to. 
And on that note, exogenous ketones, like prove it's only bioidentical ketones, can help provide fuel to the brain as the body adapts to burning fat for fuel and helps speed up the adaptation period as well as reduces inflammation and a stress response in general. And this shift in lifestyle is intended to be a life-lasting shift that becomes a new way of living. The journey of learning how to become fat and keto adapted by living a ketogenic lifestyle has taught me how important it is to become conscious of other areas in my life that I once didn't even think had the slightest effect on my brain's health or my body composition. And the great thing about becoming fat adapted and producing ketones is that ketones are protein sparing and we can have up to 20 times the amount of energy stored in our body in the form of fat than carbs, even in a lean person. And when you become fat and keto adapted, the stress minimalizes and your ability to handle stress increases. And this allows the adrenals to have a fighting chance at recovering and preserving cortisol for when it's actually needed for a life or death situation. But this process takes time and in order to create sustainability and longevity with this adaptation process, we can't rush it and we have to have patience with the process and enjoy the journey. And if you wanna learn more or have my support with adopting a ketogenic diet and lifestyle, feel free to reach out in the comments below or contact me on my website in the contact page, joshperrybmx.com and I'll do my best to support you however I can. And if you found this video helpful in any way or believe someone that you know may benefit from watching it, please be sure to give it a like and share it with anyone in your network. And as always, I appreciate your time. The love and support means the world to me and I'll catch you in the next video.